I wanna find out what's the fastest I can charge an iPhone, even if it means getting pretty crazy. This is an iPhone 8 with a brand new battery. It charges from empty to full in around an hour and 57 minutes using the fastest charger that I have. So I wanna see what I can do to speed things up a lot. I'm using an iPhone 8 because it was the first iPhone with fast charge, and I'm planning on breaking a whole lot of phones in this video, so I didn't wanna spend the big bucks on the latest iPhone. The first obvious thing to do is to just add more chargers, inspired by our friend TechRex. This is 100 chargers, and this is 100 cables. And while I don't think this will work very well, I gotta try it out. Who thought stripping this many wires would be this hard work? Okay, let's give this a shot. There we go, it's turning on. Hey, hey, it's charging. Here we go. That wasn't any faster. <laughs> in fact, it was a lot slower. But according to the math, since each one of these chargers can supply one amp, I should be able to charge this 1821 milliamp hour battery in the iPhone in a little over a minute. So what's preventing that? So I grabbed a second phone that's currently discharged and I'm gonna hook it up to my benchtop power supply. Shout out to Keysight for uh, hooking me up with some cool test gear here. Five volts. Yes, and then it's already set to 10 amps, which is the max for this circuit. And it's charging. Okay, cool. We are currently drawing almost one amp, but you'll notice we're not drawing 10 amps. So why, if the power supply can supply 10 amps, why is this only drawing 9.6? To show you why, I'm gonna have to take apart the phone. All right, there is the battery. Now, let's take this apart. There we go. So, this part here is the actual battery cell. This is where the, the chemistry magic is happening to store the electricity. But this part up here, you can see there are all these little chips. This is called the BMS, and this is the battery management system. And it's responsible for a couple different things making sure that the battery doesn't get overcharged or undercharged or overheat. Uh, it also has something called the gas gauge, which keeps track of how much electricity goes in and out of the battery cell, which tells you how uh, charged or discharged the battery is. And it actually talks to the rest of the phone to tell it that. The BMS is actually limiting that charge current. I think the next step is to figure out how to bypass this. So on the back side here, these are where the tabs get spot welded on. I wanna solder on a wire to each of these sides and I'm gonna run the risk of overheating the battery, but it, it should be okay, I've done this before. We're gonna use some eight gauge wire here. Let's pre-tin this thing. I'm gonna kinda of tin this up flat. Let's see, let me grab a piece of cardboard. That'll work. That'll work. I'm gonna leave this right where it is. But now we have two charging wires that bypass the BMS. Tomorrow, when it's light out, I'm gonna take this outside and try and charge it at a much higher amperage than the BMS would normally allow us to. This is a 90 amp, four volt power supply. It's variable between about 3.5 and 4.4 volts. I'm gonna set it to 4.2, which is about the maximum this battery should be charged at. 4.174, good enough. Needless to say, if it's not obvious, don't try this at home. I'm gonna go get a current meter here. About five amps. Doesn't seem like it's bolting at all. A little warm, but not much. 
It's like skin temperature at best. It's only charging at 1.5 amps. It's really not much more than a normal charger. I'm gonna stop it once it gets down to one amp because I don't think we're, we're gonna see any fireworks here. 0.98, I'm gonna call it here. Take this off. Just being extra careful, I don't want this thing to explode on me. I'm not expecting it. Put the battery in the bucket of sand, just in case it has thermal runaway later, inside a plastic bag, just so it doesn't short out from moisture in the sand. That did not go the way I expected it to. I expected to have a <laughs> lithium battery fire. So that's a 1.8 uh, amp hour battery, which means it should charge at 1.8 amps, would take an hour to charge. You know, we started at maybe four amps and came down past two, so, you know, had we kept charging it, I don't know, probably take an hour, hour and a half. But <laughs> in my opinion, we can still do a lot better than that. So let's head back inside. I think we're done with the LiPo batteries, but I have something else to try. These here are lithium titanate batteries, and they're supposed to be one of the fastest charging types of battery chemistry. So I've built a small battery pack out of four of them to hook up to the iPhone here that I've removed the standard battery from. I've removed the stock battery and I took the BMS off of it and just hooked up two wires to where the cell would normally be. And so this can plug in here. This is a little uh, step up voltage regulator. The max voltage of these lithium titanate batteries is only 2.85 volts, whereas a normal LiPo cell in an iPhone is around 4.2, 4.3 volts. This little voltage regulator actually steps up to five volts. The phone seems to tolerate that just fine. I've got it set to 2.85 volts. This maxes out at 10 amps. These can be charged up to five amps each. So they're wired in parallel, 20 amps. We're gonna charge it at 10 amps because that's what I've got. Right here, one, two, three, go. All right, charging at 10 amps. Look at that, 26 watts. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> okay, this is way faster so far than a stock battery. Uh, we can plug in phone now. So you can see the phone is reporting it's at 100% charge. It's not at 100% charge. It's just that the BMS has no idea what this is and what voltage it should be at. And BMS is pretty useless right now, which is what regulates how the, you know, the phone's knowledge of how charged it is. We're going to go off of how much current is flowing into the battery for how charged this is. Once it hits about 150 milliamps. That's kind of what a stock battery will do when it hits 100%. I'm gonna let this run for a little bit. Be back with you shortly. Okay, it's been around 21 minutes and we're getting very close to 150 milliamps, which is what I said the cutoff would be for considering this fully charged. There we go. Let's call it 22 minutes to fully charged. That is not bad. <laughs> to go from empty to full on an iPhone in 22 minutes. But can we do even better? What if we don't use a battery at all? This is a super capacitor. It can hold a little bit more than a normal iPhone battery, but it can also charge super quickly like a capacitor. And this one is a 5,000 farad lithium carbon super capacitor that has a max charge current of 47 amps, which is insane. <laughs> Remember, this charger is only one amp. So, to charge it at 47 amps, I need something much beefier. This charger is 90 amps, and I've hooked it up with two gauge wire and these beefy 175 amp connectors. So let's give this a shot. Okay, here we go. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, we're pretty much at 4.2 volts on here and uh, nine minutes. I think I'll declare that good. Wow, nine minutes, that's crazy. That's 13 times faster than the stock iPhone. Now, obviously this is a bit bigger than your standard iPhone. One of the downsides is that supercapacitors are a lot less dense uh, in terms of energy storage. So to store the same amount of charge as a LiPo, they need to be physically bigger. Or to put it a different way, a supercapacitor that was this size would store about half as much energy. So 
Would you rather have an iPhone that could charge in nine minutes, but would only last half as long? Or how about an iPhone that would charge super fast, last just as long, but was twice as big? Ultimately, a lot of these product and engineering decisions come down to trade-offs. I'll be honest, going into this, some of the physics and chemistry involved was a bit over my head. It's not uncommon for me to need to learn something new for one of my videos. I'm always learning as I go. So are all the best engineers and creators that I know. And categorically, they all learn best by diving in and trying to solve problems and come up with creative solutions. They don't just read a textbook or go watch a video. But you need good problems to sink your teeth into, which is why I love Brilliant so much and why I'm thrilled to have them as a sponsor. Brilliant is a tool for learning math science and computer science. I love being able to just pick up my phone or tablet when I have a few minutes and learn something new. It makes me feel like I'm always working on making myself smarter and keeping my problem solving skills sharp. And the key is their learning philosophy that centers around active learning through solving challenges, not just passively reading or, or watching videos. I turn to Brilliant to brush up on my chemistry knowledge for this video using their chemical reactions course. This right here is a problem about atom molecule concentrations and how many reactions we can expect. You know, look at the animation, read sort of their text explaining, and then they give you a quiz. And so I'll say, how many collisions do we expect in the first moment? 250. Great. Okay, so if I got that wrong, or if I just want more uh, explanation on how to get to that answer, I can click on show explanation and it'll lead me through it. And then back to the problem, and then I can continue on. They don't have just chemistry, they have tons of great courses. Want to learn to program? They have a great Python programming course, which is the language I write the most, and I recommend as the best language for learning to program. Or if you're already a software engineer like I am, you should check out their machine learning, neural networks, and quantum computing courses. Or learn how computer memory works. What's a stack? What's a heap? How does caching work? Or dive into electricity and magnetism, calculus, number theory, or gravitational physics. There are code writing challenges, quizzes, and interactive demonstrations. So if you want to start improving your problem solving skills and level up your math science or computer science knowledge, I definitely recommend you give them a try. To start learning for free, you can head on over to brilliant.org slash strange parts, which you'll find in the description down below. And if you're among the first 200 people to click that link and sign up, you're going to get 20% off your annual premium subscription. I want to give a big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and being a huge supporter of Strange Parts in general. And if you want to see more videos of me modifying phones and other interesting electronics, be sure to click that subscribe button. Or go watch my previous iPhone videos here, or go see how iPhone batteries are made in a factory here. I'll see you again soon.